Okay, let's start. I have, I have two very simple questions. Um, so Twitch is sending electric shocks to the player so that she or he uh, is going to play the, a game of Snake perfectly. So I was wondering, you know, the stupid question, how bad are the electric shocks? Yeah, uh, I don't think it's so stupid because um, when I exhibited it actually in the past, um, there's always this fear of electricity. I have experienced that a lot. So even in my master presentation, I think one of the professors was even, even though we are in the topic and so on, scared because I don't know, electricity has this, 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 this scare some, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> vibe with it. But um, in this, project there is like um i built in a tense unit which is this this electric shock giving unit but it's a commercially used one so you can buy them so it's nothing like hacky that um i don't know if you forgot something then you maybe you electrify the person connected to it it's just like a commercially used um, device which is yeah as it is it, it's not like harmful it's um not pleasant if you crank it up to the max, but you can. So um, and uh, so, if you lose the, the 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 first scary thing about it, it's not that bad. So it's just like it depends actually also on your skin. If it's if it's wet, so if you're sweating, it's not that bad. Um, <laughs> then if you're like having a dry skin, then it's more like um, really twitching. So it's it's more like painful. Um, that's why, yeah, you can use like electrode lubricant on your skin and then it's um, also easier because then you don't even have to crank it up to the max. Uh, and it still um, creates what, what I was intending to, which is this um, muscle uh, uh, contraction, which is basically, yeah, what we want to achieve. <laughs> and um, so it's not painful if you lose the... the, the the um yeah if you if you're not scared anymore it can be painful but um in the end it's not something that you that you really yeah <laughs> it's not that bad i forget to tell you that um uh on on skype when i record there is one half is the, the screen with you and one half is the screen with me so when you answer i'm going now to turn off the camera so that when you answer there's only you uh, in the video, but you will see a dark uh, screen, but I will still be there doing this. Okay. okay. Um, uh, yeah, and also that, that was not um, one of the, the questions I sent you, but I, I was wondering is, uh, uh, have you noticed that people play worse because they are afraid of getting an electric shock? Uh, does it affect their performance? Um, yeah, so I'm just recalling like one one exhibition because I was always there. I had to first um, let them lose their their fear, basically. So by by showing them how how I would or how it is is made and and losing this 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 control and being really this this passive passive uh, uh, human in in this in this whole um, loop. Um, and playing worse, hmm. Yeah, some I was I was actually quite uh, happy sometimes when when people actually basically just just went in and 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 let it play and and didn't like because sometimes people really like get this this um, the surprise this moment of surprise and they uh, yeah sometimes even don't want to even though it's as I said not painful they they just don't want it it's not like something pleasant and so on and they just said okay no sorry I don't want to play but when people are actually um, engaging and doing it, uh, then it it worked as it was working also for me that they that they really like got this out of it, which is this okay, I'm really uh, controlled by the machine to play a game right now and so on. So I don't know. So some people, it it was like more like this personal thing how they how they played it because in the end. It doesn't matter who is connected to it because the outcome should be the same. So um, they are not playing worse or better. If they play worse, then it's because they they are not like fully engaging into the into the whole thing. So. <laughs> 
Um, so I was interested in this uh, connection between the humans and the machines that you just, just mentioned, because it's going, it's already spreading to more and more areas of life, uh, especially in work context, in Amazon warehouses, in office uh, works, for example. But I was wondering, how do you see this uh, connection between, between machines and human playing out in art and creativity? Are you, you know, welcoming this use of automated systems in creative processes in the development of your own works? Um, so, yeah, I um, actually am embracing it, so I, I like it <laughs> um, to, to a point. So um, I like it because I think um, it's necessary that it goes in, in this direction and it goes farther because um, if you think about it in the past, um, yeah, because I was reading about it, uh, even uh, wearing a watch wasn't like um, something that everybody had access to or nobody actually at some point. And then it became like this extension and then you have this 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 time with you always. And then it went to the phone, which now uh, people also say, um, if you think of cyborgs and, and so on, that the the theory was always like we are gonna i don't know put something into our body and make ourselves like a cyborg and so on but in the end it played out that um yeah we we carry a device with us that can do so many things that uh, we are not capable of and it helped a lot it also brought so many bad things with it and and people are learning and i think it's always like this 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 process of it has to go in in one direction and maybe it it shoots out in the wrong direction at some point uh, we we find it out and and learn out of it and see what was the good parts of it and and take this out and then the next step comes and i see the same thing also with machine learning and and for example as one big topic uh, which brings also a lot of good things with it and also a lot of bad things with it. So I think um, if especially for arts or art in general or design and, and making things um, that weren't possible in the past. So uh, I don't know if you think of even simple software that you can use uh, for, for creating um, yeah, projects uh, that were just not possible to achieve and you can do them on your on your tablet or whatever on your not so powerful computer uh and uh which which was something not available and that's what i like about it um what i don't like um is a little bit um to be yeah to be cautious about that because um i'm embracing the, the tools and the new ways what i am a little bit scared of is um I've seen it uh, with one of my projects where I used a database of, of images and created um, yeah new outcome and so on. The outcome that you get, which is based on this database and on machine learning and so on, the outcome is very uh, similar. So not similar, but it 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 is based on this what you would have what you have used as the as the starting point. And if everybody is using the same starting point, the the out Put and the outcome that gets out uh, becomes more and more similar and mundane and maybe b boring. And um, I'm not sure if um, yeah if if it's if it's some in some in some directions also creating a backstab, not uh, uh, not getting forward, but maybe um, yeah, especially the topic of attention span. I'm I'm quite fascinated with it because if you yeah go to instagram and so on and look at people's work and so on and um see it in just this this amount of of seconds and and maybe a person has worked i don't know half a year on this project and you scroll through it and and don't like appreciate or maybe appreciate it less and and i think that works that that have not or that if you if you that with with those things that that have uh, risen um, and for example the attention span that um, has become yeah in my opinion uh, very very small um, that it becomes uh, so that 
more projects that are maybe fast made and maybe machine learning processes that are very similar to each other are a good way to do it um, are embraced and and people maybe create works that is that is just like to create something out of it because I don't know. Um, so, so I, I, I think that um, you have to you have to see like how to use those new ways. But um, I really like them, and I also think that um, because right now I'm thinking of it uh, because I'm I'm uh, teaching right now generative design, and I I really like this topic because there, in the beginning, if you describe it, it's it's already like this. Okay, in generative design, you have the artist or the designer, and you have those uh, computer algorithms that you use. And um, in the end, the work that comes out, um, you can't distinguish anymore. Like, um, or yeah, it's it's like a connection of those two. So it's not only the artist because uh, the artist on its own can't can't create a work. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, like that, and it's not only the algorithm because, or not, yeah, not only the the computer program that basically translates what the artist is giving. It's always like this connection, and it's creating some interesting things that are also not possible on its own. So those are like things that I think are uh, the interesting things, and uh, I think it should be embraced, but maybe with the caution of, um, yeah, what what we create out of it. <laughs> So, so about that, I think. Um, but it's interesting, and I actually never thought about, you know, what you said about attention span and the amount of time an artist dedicated to a work, and and maybe people watch it on Instagram and don't don't pay the attention that maybe the work deserves. Um, so my last question is um, is very very much related to what you've just said. Um, and it's about you know this fear that uh, artificial intelligence and machines are going to steal the work of everybody, like they used to take machines used to take the work of uh, workers in factories, and now suddenly they take the works of white collar workers. But how about the artists? Because um, you know artists used to say, oh, you know, we we have something special and, and yeah, we're not afraid of automation, but then you see more and more stories about how machines are composing music, doing cartoons, painting a Rembrandt, writing an article about an art exhibition. It's not always very good, but it's not that bad. It can also improve. So, do you think that uh, artists are, are threatened by by machine that sh they should be afraid somehow? Um, yeah, I think I think this this is kind of a, a hard not hard question, but um, I myself also am in the position where I'm like, okay, how is my future, for example, uh, looking <laughs> for me, and what are the threats, and are there actually any, and so on, and what I think is a little bit like calming in that topic is that all the processes that we also see right now, even if it looks like, okay, the text is generated automatically, the images is decided automatically, um, it's still all based on human desire and uh, on human um, data or human created data, human uh, um, yeah, generated data and so on. And I think for myself that um, at some point, um, as I said before, maybe the things become very mundane and very like, yeah, the database is not maybe filled with new stuff. So it's always the same or similar stuff that comes out. But um, yeah, probably some of the processes are so good that you that you wouldn't even notice, even though maybe in the background it's very similar. But what, I, what, what gives me maybe a little bit uh, confidence uh, for the future is that there is still this human aspect that you, that, you, that you need to fill those databases. And if you go to the future, maybe you need to um, yeah, create new stuff out of or new things out of, out of what, what is possible. Even though you are using maybe an a automated algorithm, you put maybe your own uh, touch to it and create something new and 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 work it in the next direction and maybe we will lose some individuality i don't know but um maybe it's not so bad maybe it's the future i don't know maybe <laughs> some artists are connected to 
certain algorithms so they are always using it and are like connected with with it i don't know it's it's like um st strange and and hard to to think about but um what i think is kind of important is basically right now for for artists and designers to do projects that show those possibilities and um maybe even when they are negative but that they are shown so so we know maybe in which direction we don't want to go or so we have like right now maybe the possibility to to really like like show uh, uh and 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 see um yeah what what future we we don't want to have so if we think of a project where we see like uh all the art pieces look the same or whatever so we we can can combine it somehow um to just make it clear even maybe for for the for the masses that they maybe also don't embrace like like you see so often in, in machine learning so every company needs to have machine learning even though they don't they don't actually need it maybe but um it's it's this this buzzword and so on and i also think that um yeah just showing what what is good and what is bad about it um will maybe also help that that um it could show that the human aspect is is always something that you don't want to lose but if it's going to play out like that let's see but i'm not sure <laughs> um 